So uh, recall, what was a natural growth model? So there are many models for population growth. You can use this for population growth of human beings, bacteria, or rate of spread of say coronavirus or something like that. Uh, although the rate of spread may not be as simple as this. So there are quite a few models for that. So one of the model is a natural growth model. It is used for population under the assumption that the population growth population at time t changes at the rate proportional to the size of population at given time t. So this means what? The rate of change of population, which is dp by dt, is proportional to the size of the population. So it's proportional to size of population at time t. So, so this is a symbol for proportionality. This would mean dp by dt is k times p, where k is a constant. If k is greater than zero, then you will have exponential growth. If k is less than zero, then you get exponential decay. Okay. So exponential decay curve looks more or less like this. So now let's try to see the model. So we have dp by dt equals to kp, where k is a constant. And this is a separable equation, is a separable, is, uh, is separable. Now that gives us, so therefore we can write dp by p equals to k dt. Now integrate on both sides. So this means integration of dp by p equals to integration of k dt, which gives me ln of p. Now note that p is positive, right? Since population is always positive, we don't need the absolute value, is kt plus c. So therefore we get p equals to e to the power kt plus c, which we have a e to the power kt, where a is what? A is e to the power c equals to a. Now note that you can change this problem. So this is a solution already. So population at time t zero, suppose this is given to you, given population at time zero, let's give it a name p zero. Then we get what p equals to a e to the power zero. So what is p of zero? p of zero is going to be a e to the power k times zero on one hand. And on the other hand, you'll get this is equal to p zero. So this would mean a equals to p zero. And hence the solution is therefore p equals to p zero e to the power k t is the solution. Now, question, so well, what happens limit as t goes to infinity of p of t? If you look at this limit as t goes to infinity of p zero e to the power kt, this is infinity since k is greater than zero. We are assuming the population. Now, this is not realistic. This is not realistic, right? Because the population can never be infinity, right? or population cannot grow without the bound. One may argue, well, t will never become infinity, but that the fact that t goes to infinity, p of t is infinity, it means that as key, t becomes larger and larger, p of t grows without any bound. But that is not possible, right? The resources are limited. So we need to modify this model, okay? So that's where the logistic growth model comes into the picture. So, so natural growth model implies that the population so population growth implies the population go exponentially indefinitely however the model must break down since the population would eventually outstrip the food supply right so we need to have an improvement of this model one of the suggested model is called logistic growth model so what is the logistic growth model logistic growth model is a modification of natural growth 
So what should happen is for small, growth rate is initially close to proportional to the size. So for small p, the growth is dp by dt is roughly kp, or there is an exponential growth to start with. However, the environment is capable of maximum population in the long run. We'll call this as carrying capacity. We can have estimate of it, right? So suppose if you have a farm of 100 by 100 feet, then you can actually say how many bunnies can be there, right? There must be a maximum number of bunnies you can have, right? Or maximum number of cows you can have in that farm. So if you're considering a population on a finite area or due to the food re restrictions, there is a maximum carrying capacity. So that is limit as t goes to infinity of p of t, and let that be m. We have an estimate for m, so let's call that m. So the simplest growth model that incorporate both of these assumptions is dp by dt is kp one minus p by m. So why is that? Let's see. So this actually looks like this. When we draw it, you'll see the, the growth model looks more like this. So initially there is an exponential growth, but then, so there's an exponential growth, but then it basically becomes, when you're reaching your carrying capacity, it becomes almost zero. So now note the following. So what happens is dp by dt, when is dp by dt equals to zero? When p equals to zero or p equals to m. So these are equilibria for you. Now, so consider the following. So if p is small, if p is small, what do you get? You get dp by dt is roughly going to be equal to what? If p is small, this is roughly going to be one, sorry, this is going to be zero, right? So this is going to be zero. In that case, your dp by dt is going to be kp. If p is roughly equal to m, then we'll have dp by dt equals to what? This will become one, and one minus one will become zero. So we get what? dp by dt will be, if p is roughly m, if p is roughly m, then dp by dt is going to be zero. So which makes sense that when you're getting closer and closer to m, the, the population should become zero. So now we have the following differential equation, which basically is called the logistic growth model. And we want to solve it. So how do we solve this? So we have integral. So first of all, it is separable. It is separable. So we can separate it. So we have dp by p times one minus p by m equals to integral of k dt. So let's integrate this. We'll use partial fractions here. So we can also simplify this as m upon p times one p m minus p integral dp equals to k. So now on this side we need a partial fraction. So if you look at the partial fraction, we can have this is going to be so m upon p times m minus p is going to be a by p plus b by m minus p which is going to be a times m minus p plus b p. And this must be equal to m. So we want to solve this equation for a and b. So note that if p equals to m, we get b m equals to m, which implies b equals to one. Similarly, if p equals to zero, we get a times minus p, sorry, p equals to zero, we get a times m equals to m, which gives me what p equals, a equals to 
one. Now note that in principle, these are not a possibility, right? So if you look at this guy here, this is not a possibility really, because your population will never reach the carrying capacity or your population will never be zero. But however, when we make an equation out of it, we can solve it using these values. So we get what A is, B is one, A is one. So now this integral can be, therefore, this is equal to A by, A by P, so I get what? A by P, which is one by P plus B is also one. So one upon M minus P dP equals to integral of k dt. So let me make space here. So now what is integration of one by p? So one by p is ln of p. Again, because population p is positive. Similarly, the integration here would be ln of m minus p divided by minus one. And again, because your population is always less than the carrying capacity, and this is positive, and I get kt plus c. So this can be written as ln of p minus m minus p equals to kt plus c. So when you simplify this, you get, we get, we get ln of, so when we simplify this, we can get P upon M minus P is equal to E to the power KT plus C, which can be written as, so now we want to simplify this. So this means P equals to m minus p times e to the power kt plus c. So what we want is the following. So we want to solve for p now. So this becomes p. So let's call this e to the power c as a. So this is a. So we get p equals to m e to the power kt times a minus a p e to the power kt. Bring this on the other side. So we get p times one plus a e to the power kt equals to m e to the power kt over a. And this would imply p equals to one upon m e to the power kt a over one plus a e to the kt. Now we want to simplify this. So how do we go about it? Again, so this is your pop. The problem is done. We need to find out what a could be. So when a is, when what, when p equals to, when p is zero, we get P equals to P zero. So therefore, what do we get? We can solve it either here or at the top here. So let's solve for that. So we get if A P equals to P zero. So when we get P of zero equals to M E to the power zero times A one plus A. So we get this is equal to P zero. So this implies P zero is A upon one plus A. And then when you solve for it, you will get, you get basically, you get, we want to solve for A now. So we get one plus A times P zero equals to A, which is going to be, so now we need, we get A times one minus P zero.
So I get A times M minus P zero equals to P zero. So I get A equals to P zero upon M minus P zero. So we get therefore P of T equals to M e to the power k t a which is p0 minus m minus p0 divided by 1 plus p0 minus m minus p0 times e to the k t so this is your solution however if this solution looks ugly you can change it so if you want, we can change it to the following. Divide top and bottom by e to the power kt. So if you divide top and bottom by e to the power kt, you will get e to the power minus kt. And then divide top and bottom by p0, m minus p0. So you'll get m minus p0 over p0 plus 1 over m. So this is also equivalent solution for the same thing. All right, I'm dividing top and bottom by something to make it look more familiar with the textbook, right? But this is the idea behind the logistic model. And also, if you take limit as t goes to infinity of p of t, what will happen is this part, this denominator will go to zero. So this is indeed M as expected. So this is an example of a logistic. We will have a following problem. Suppose a population grows according to the logistic model. Model with initial population. with the initial population of 1000 and carrying capacity as 10,000. If the population, if the population grows to 250, 2500 after one year, what will be the population after will be the population after another three years? after another three years. So this is the population growth problem. So first of all, so solution. So instead of memorizing the solution to the differential equation, we should be able to write down the differential equation. So let P of T, so P of T denote population at time t. Now we have to decide time t must be measured in everything is measured in years. So in years. So now differential equation is dp by dt equals to kp times 1 minus p by m. Right? This is a logistic logistic growth differential equation logistic growth differential equation now here what is given to us m is given to us given m is m is given to us as the carrying capacity is 10000 you're also given the population, initial population is 1000. So we'll need that information at some point. So let's call that as P0. P0 
zero or p of zero, what are we gonna call? p of zero is thousand. You're also given p after one year, so we'll need that information as well. So let's write down all the information. P of one is 2,500. All right, so therefore my differential equation becomes dP by dt equals to K P one minus P over thousand. So now it amounts to solving this differential equation. So we can write this as K P thousand minus P over thousand. This should be 10,000, right? Or M. So this should be 10,000. Thanks. So now, um, so now we want to solve this differential equation. So what we'll do is the following. We'll keep dP over P times 1,000 minus P equals to 1,000. We can bring this 1,000 also here if you want. We can also be in this 10,000 here, 10,000, one, two, three, four, equals to K dt. Now we need to apply the partial fractions here. So you can see that one upon P plus one upon 1,000 minus P is going to be dP, is going to be one upon P times Right, you can cross multiply and check that this is the, the case. So therefore integrating, so star, so therefore star becomes what? Integrating on both sides, we get therefore dp upon p plus, or I can write one upon p plus one upon 1000 minus p equals to dp equals to integration of k dt. So this is going to be ln p minus ln of 1000 minus p equals to kt plus some constant c. So this will give me p upon using the property of ln, I get ln of 1000, 10,000 minus p equals to kt plus c, which will give me p upon 1000 minus p equals to e to the power kt times e to the power c. So now we are close to finding, so let this be, let's call this as a, e to the power kt times a. So now we get this equation. So now we need to find out K, we need to find out A. So for that extra pieces of information must be given to you. So what is given P of zero, P of thousand, zero is thousand. So P of zero upon thousand minus 10,000 minus P of zero equals to A times E to the power zero, which is A. Now this implies thousand divided by 10,000 minus 1,000, which is one over nine equals to A. So put that back in the equation. So we get P upon 1,000, 10,000 minus P equals to E to the power KT times one over nine. This is your A. Now note that at any point of time, you're not asked what is your P of T. So there's no need to restructure and re-simplify. All we need to do is we need to find out what is the population after, after another three years. So we are interested in what? P of four. That is our concern, right? Because after one year, it's 2,500. And after another three years, so that means one year, first year plus another 
three years. So P of four is what is our interest. So for that, we need to find out this K. So there must be some more information given to us. And what is that information? It is that after one year, it is 2,500. So P of one, so given P of one is 2,500. So put that in the equation, we get P upon, so 2,500. So put substitute P of one in star. Let's call this equation star. So we get 25 divided by 1000 minus 10,000 minus 2,500 equals to e to the power k over nine. So this gives me, so this is gonna be 2,500 divided by 7,500, which is going to be e to the power k over nine. This means what? One by three equals to e to the power k. So we get e to the power k equals to three. All right, so now what is p of four? P of four, I mean, from here you can also write k equals to ln three, but notice what is p of four? So if you substitute in this equation, again, we get p of four divided by one minus p of four, sorry, 10,000 minus p of four is equal to e to the power 4k by nine, which is same as e to the power k, the whole power four by nine. So that is going to be, what is e to the power k? We have found out that to be three. So three to the power four divided by nine, which is going to be 20. So three, three, the nine, nine. So this is gonna be nine. So we get p to the four equals to 90,000 minus nine p four. So therefore we get p of four, equals to 10 P of four equals to 90,000. So this means P of four equals to nine. So this is how the whole problem is done. Note that in this case, you could have also tried to solve for P of T if you wished. Yeah, it's not really hard to find P of T here, but you can, you don't need to find P of T unless the problem is asking you to do so.